Hi everybody, this is Tina with Rehatch Designs and I'm here with the video um, on um, using old books for book covers um, for your journals and um, I'm going to be doing one um, pretty much uh, not super complicated but I think it would be a good idea for people if they're trying to um, learn how to use old book covers. Um, I'm not going to be covering it with material or anything like that. It's going to be just with paper. So I don't think it's going to be that complicated. But anyway, I thought we'd get right to it. Um, I have been collecting old book covers for a while. And I just, um, I love the way they look. I love the, the Tina. Um, Partly the reason I collect them, too, is um, I like the papers that are in them, so I'll use, you know, because they're nice and vintage, and I'll use the papers, like this was an old dictionary, which I love, but um, this is a newer one. Um, I just like the size of this, so I kept it, but um, here's another one. And I mainly uh, love the, uh, you know, the papers that were like, here's, for instance, is give you an idea of what the papers look like. They're great. Um, great patina and things like that. But I've taken the papers out of these. And then I have some others that um, I bought. Um, yes, I like what's on the inside. They're very vintage um, papers. Uh, this is the Bible alphabet, but I love the cover. I just love this cover. Um, and so I'm probably going to do something with that. And then I got this one, All Aboard Fun. Um, you know, I mean, and they're pretty beat up. So, but um, I just love the covers and the print on them. And, you know, I... I I really would like to use those. Let me see what other ones I have in here. I have some that are smaller. This is from a French English um, dictionary, which I, I love this. So I'm planning on making something out of that. Um, this one, um, this one has the other part of it in there somewhere. I don't know. Usually they're in such bad shape that you know, I know the back of this is somewhere. Oh, here it is. Um, so, you know, I just thought this would be a great travel uh, journal. And the pages in it were great. And then look at this one. The Bopsy Twins in the Country. And I have the pages to this somewhere, but I love this. And so I do have a lot of plans to use them. Of course, you can use um, a new a new book. You don't have to use an old one to do this. Um, any book that you think is the size you want. This is a good size here. That's partly why I put it in there. And I probably will be doing um, something on a, a newer book cover. Um, I But I have done that before. So I kind of thought, well, I'll just do this for now. And then that way you guys can kind of see, you know, um, I just have a special spot where I keep these. And anyway, let me put all this back, get it out of the way. But there's some, I mean, some of them are pretty beat up, but um, I kind of like them that way. So I will definitely um, show you what I'm gonna do with them. All right, so anyway, what I'm gonna do today is I have a book cover that I've had for a while. Let me get it out. Ugh. I'm actually using two different ones. Okay. So I've had this book cover and I love it. I just, I love the patina. And, anyway, um, 
it's really bigger than what I need for my journal, but I'm planning on doing something else inside the journal. So um, I think I'm gonna use it. And the spine is pretty beat up, but I'm gonna fix that and so we can use it, but I'm gonna leave it kind of how it is. Um, I'm not planning on like replacing the spine. Now, when you have ones that there is no spine, you know, you have to replace it with something. I have this one here too. Um, this one, of course, it has a very small spine in it, but I'm going to do something with that. So, um, I'll show you what we do with that too. Anyway, um, what you have to do, and it just depends. Now, if you want to replace the spine, you can get some chipboard. Um, most of the time, your spines are um, way too small to use, but this one is um, yeah, this is two inches, so that's all I would probably make my spine anyway. Um, what you would want to do if you're going to um, replace your spine with a, a bigger spine is you would want to get chipboard and cut it out to be whatever size your spine needs to be if you want it two inches by whatever um, this length is of this book. This book here, this is, um, yeah, this is nine and a half inches by seven inches so it's it's you know it's pretty big so but you would make it nine and a half inches by two inches if you want two inches or three inches and then you would basically um do what i'm doing um but with your own piece of chipboard in there and then decorate it however you want okay on this one what i'm gonna do is i am going to actually just leave it the way it is and just reinforce everything okay so um, the way that I'm gonna do that is first I'm just gonna take um, this is just plain old tacky glue and I'm gonna take that and just kind of glue these the parts down that I can you know nothing real special going on here and let's see, I don't know if that'll go down or not, but I'm gonna, I, I want all these tattered pieces in there. Put that right there. See if I can get that to stick. I might use my three in one glue because it's a little quicker. I mean, you can use any, um, kind of glue that you think works well. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I am gonna be putting Tyvek, and that is um, a product that you can buy. Um, I bought it, but you can get it. It's the uh, mailing, mailer envelopes that you get. That it's kind of a, it feels like paper, but it's really strong. Um, you can use um, recycle those or you can buy some. I bought mine and gosh, you get a lifetime supply. And I am gonna make it, since this is two inches, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. Um, let me use my cutter because I think I kinda want it semi-straight. Get it out here. So we decided this is two inches and by, gosh, it's really bigger than nine and a half. It's what, nine and three quarters. So I am gonna make a piece. Move that for a second. <clears throat> and I'm gonna make it I'm gonna say a half inch on each side. So I'm gonna make it three inches by nine and three quarters, just because I wanna be able to um, have a little room on each side for it to grab the parts where it's falling apart. So we're gonna make this, 
nine and three quarters. And if it's a little bit smaller, that's fine. No big deal. You're really just reinforcing what's already there. Although there isn't much of a spine there. Save these little pieces because I wind up using them all the time. And then I'm going to make it um, three inches because that gives me a half an inch. You know, maybe I'll make it more. I'm going to make it three and a half inches. I wonder if that will be big enough. Yeah, I'm going to make it three and a half inches wide. And if it's, if it's too wide, I can always cut it down. And anyway, I mean, I save all those pieces and I end up using them. But anyway, that's what I'm going to do with that. Back here. And I am going to go ahead, and this is going to go right here. And I don't want it sticking out, so it's just perfect. And I think that extra little bit, you want to um, go past your spine and onto your book cover so that it um, is going to reinforce it, okay? But let me see how it looks on the other end. There is one thing that I may do. I don't want this white showing through on the other side. So I think what I'm going to do is I have, I have some I already tea stained. And then I have some other stuff too, so I'm not sure which one I might use. The point is, when you're doing this, you want to reinforce um, your spine, but at the same time, okay, good, I have one there, I like that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and see if I think I'm going to put this gauze this is kind of a gauze material, and I'm gonna put it, I can either do that or put this in there. Now, material will also reinforce it. The other thing you can use is duct tape. Duct tape works great. You just put some here and then right there. Works, I think, just as good as Tyvek. So, um, if you don't wanna buy Tyvek, I think what I'm gonna do, I might put this in there, because it's about the right size, and have it sticking up a little bit. Sometimes I do both, and not, not for any other reason than just for looks, guys. I might do both. I'm going to take a piece approximately two inches, and I'm just going to tear it because I want it tattered. And then I am going to, well, that's a little weird on that side. I want it frayed and tattered, so that's okay if it is. I may put that right there. And this is only for looks. This is not to reinforce it. But because this is um, ripped a little bit, you will see through it somewhat. And I'm just going to use my glue, open that up a little bit, and put a little glue all the way down here. It's probably more than I need. I like to spread it around a little bit. Like that. Okay. Let's see here. And I usually put it in, uh, you know, more than I need on top and then cut it later. But I do like it to hang over, so well, this might have not torn very good, so we shall see. You're not going to really see it on the inside, you're just going to see it on the ends. So, but I don't want it all bulked up in there. Okay, so I think, let me see how the tie book's going to look in there. Now it's gonna look. I don't want the white to show, so I gotta kind of get that over here more a little bit. All right, yeah, let me get that spread out a little bit. Okay, 
so I don't think this is going to be wide enough to cover it though for sure. I have another piece, but I have to kind of dye it. I think what I'm going to do, go ahead and put the tie back on and then I'll just cut another piece. I want to make it um, wide enough to make, you know, to make sure it goes over the ends. And that kind of, this is going to hold your book together. So it's really important that you get that in there and you have enough hanging over that it reinforces your spine. And there's going to be a paper over this and I'm going to put some material over it so that'll actually it's going to go past this hey whenever I'm with you guys I just wanted to tell you a lot of times I do not pre-plan so um, I'm kind of making up my mind as I go so it may look like I'm un unprepared I wouldn't really call it that I'm just kind of crafting with you. I'm not really doing this necessarily as a tutorial. Um, I'm doing what I'm going to do anyway, and if you learn something, great. Um, so, um, sometimes I'm just kind of, you know, deciding what I'm going to do. So, it's not a matter of not knowing um, or being prepared. It's a matter of making a decision as I go and to me that's part of the process I'm trying to find my I could use my tool my actual tools that I have for this anyway I'll wipe some of that off it's too much over there and then now you can definitely color your tie back if you don't want to material over it or paper or anything like that. You can cover it with paper. Anyway, I'm just making sure that it gets glued down really well because it's really important. That material that I put first isn't really going to do a whole lot. It will help reinforce it, but it's not going to, it's not going to definitely, um, okay, so now I'm going to this is where it folds. I'm going to fold it and go back over it to make sure you get in the crease a little bit. And you just want to make sure that you get it on there good. And if you're using duct tape, the really cool thing about that is it sticks, of course. And any of you who ever use duct tape, you know, it's hard for that stuff to, you know, come off. This stuff is pretty much indestructible, so your book will be very well bound. I think I put it in there crooked. Oh well, let me move it over a tiny bit. I can't tell. Yep, do it again. And just, just a tiny bit. It's not going to matter, honestly, guys, because. Okay. This is some reason why I use a three-in-one glue when I'm filming, just because um, it does dry quicker. But I have been trying lately to use my tacky glue because the three-in-one glue is getting hard to find for some reason. Um, I mean, you can still find it, but it's harder to find, and it's getting more expensive. So I thought, well, I'm going to try and use my tacky glue a little bit more, which is just a white... Um, PVA glue, um, a little thicker, and I use that a lot, and it does work really well. It just takes longer to dry. Okay, so there's that, and you can see, you can't see the white through there now. You can just see the material, and I, of course I can, you know, glue that down a little bit. So, um, I want this to, I'm going to be putting some different lace and stuff like that on there too, but okay, oh, now it's coming off because I bent it. Yeah, it's not, you really have to wait for it to dry, and I usually, 
just let it sit for a little while. Let that sit for a minute. And then I'm going to go ahead and figure out what material I'm going to put in there. I have several different kinds. I may just use this because it's about the right width. Um, it depends on, you know, how far you want it to go. If you're going to put paper here or whatever. Um, I want this a little bit more grungy. So let me think what I'm going to do with that. Probably going to tear this on this side so it has a frayed edge. And let me see if I'm going to cover these. The papers that I am using, I am going to be using um, Tsunami Rose. And this is, um, it's um, Tsunami Rose Ambrosia in Vogue on Etsy. And um, if you guys want to look at that, um, it is, I'll try and remember to link it, but see that doesn't cover the whole inside. So I don't know. I may, while this is drying, I may want to put some gesso or something up here or other papers. Let me think what I might do here. And all I want to do, I like the width of this. I want it a little bit smaller. So I think I'm just going to see if I can rip it. So it'll be frayed. I like it frayed. And let's see. How big do I need to make that? and go like this. So there I have my piece that I'm going to put in the middle. And I want to make it just a little bit more grungy. I have my little grungy spray stuff. And I'll see. Let me put this underneath it. I don't actually... This will work better. That way it doesn't get all over the place. And this is something that I make up that's just, um, oh, my sprayer's not working. That's great. Okay, let me see if I have another one in there. I might, maybe I'll just switch out the spray thing. I have two different colors here. And I make it with, um, with, um, alcohol ink. And alcohol and the reason I do it with alcohol is that um, it dries super quick so if you're trying to grungy something up it does that and it kind of yeah I think that'll turn out good it will it will dot it will go lighter when I um, let me see I think that's good enough it doesn't I don't need it super you know, grungy. I just want it to be, yeah, this is a little bit dark, different color. And I usually do more than one color on it. And I use this on papers. I use it on, you know, whatever I'm putting on there. So, okay, that'll be good. And it'll dry very quickly. So we shall be able to use that. Okay. I'll move these over here because I'm probably going to need them again in a minute. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is, hopefully this is dry. If it's not, we're still going to do what we're going to do. I am going to go ahead and I think I'm going to gesso the outer edges of this um, just so that I will... Um, have I don't want to necessarily cover it with paper it will actually work better and not show the little 
See, look, it's still wanting to come up. Boy, I think it's the humidity. It's just really... Okay. Because mm. when I'm using an old book cover, I really like to leave as much of the original um, in there as possible. Um... And I mean, you know what? I may not even cover that. We'll see. We'll see. I'm kind of just going along. Okay, this is going to end up being like a bit right here. And I'm going to tear it. Okay. There we go. And then this other side. I'll tear too. Okay, and I'll tear it. I'll mess with it more later when it's more, when it's super dry. But right now, I'm gonna just leave it alone. Um, yeah, that'll be kind of messed with. I'll mess with that later because it's pulling up this other stuff. So, all right. Um, now I'm gonna take my material measure it, make sure it's where I want it, and I want it to go past the tie back. Okay. I may want to fray this a little bit more on the ends. My best tool for that is I like to take this little hook thing, and I just kind of rip it, and I go just it works really well. I'm just going to kind of pull at that and just, I just want it to look a little bit more worn. Okay. Do this. It just looks too, too new. Of course, there's some fabrics that fray more than others, so. And this is just a cotton um, piece of um, muslin material that I love. I buy this, and I use it in a lot of different ways, but well, that needs to be definitely torn more. The other side is not as bad as far as looking new. I don't know if I, I might make that just a tiny bit smaller too. Yeah. I'm going to go right here. Yeah. I think I like that sides better. You, I want it to cover the tie back and, and go over the side, but I don't want it too, too big. Okay. I think that's going to be good. Okay. I think that will work. And I can go ahead and color this in a little bit in case it shows through a little. I don't think it will, but just in case. The corner still doesn't want to stick down. It's amazing. Okay, and this, of course, that col that also colors some of your stuff that you have on there. And this time, I think I'm going to use my 3-in-1. Now, I have to decide if I'm going to go ahead and put... Let's see, I don't know. Well, let me work on the cover, and then I'm going to, it's going to help me decide what I'm going to do. I am trying to decide what I want to put on the front. I love this piece. Um, but then I was thinking I like this one, too. Um... 
they're just all so beautiful. Very colorful. Um, let's see. I really have a hard time deciding because they really are pretty. And it could be either side because honestly, guys, you can... Um, I mean, I'm going to cut them in half so it's going to go like that. Could go there. That could go there. I know you guys have an opinion. Could go there. Could go there. I kind of like that. I am just kind of at a loss right now because it's a very tough decision to make. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to tear this and I've got to tear the edges. I don't want it on there like perfectly straight. So let me tear that. This one kind of does have like a line, which is okay, I don't, I don't care, but. All right, now I'm gonna try and tear these on this edge. Right here. And I don't care if it's straight, straight. I actually don't want it straight, but I'm gonna do that. sometimes to tear them when they're that close to the edge. There we go. And then this one right here. Oh, come on. There we go. Yeah, that's perfect. Love it. Um, I mean, I'm, I don't know. I love that rose right up there. So, I don't know love it. It's really hard to decide. They're so pretty. Okay, let me do that again. I think I just had an idea of what I want to do on the inside. But I won't say anything until I do it. I change my mind constantly, guys, when I do stuff. It's just, like, I may plan things, and then what will happen is, I'm going to use the same. Okay, yeah, just right there. Um, and then when I do it, when I actually do it, and I'm sure you guys are like this, too. And you go, oh, well, that's not, it didn't turn out the way I thought it was going to in my head. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and ink these up on the edges. Um, first, let me do this. I'm going to just kind of make them look a little bit more vintage. Now, I um, print on parchment paper. So as bright as these are, they're not even close to how, you know, bright they were if you did it on white cardstock. So um, I do it on, um, and this has coffee paper, um, her, her digital on the back, because I was going to use these inside, and then I decided, well, I am going to use some inside, but um, I, just, I decided I wanted to put this stuff on the outside. I was having the hardest time deciding what I was going to do for a cover to do these, I mean, do these justice, because they're just, I mean, they're gorgeous. To me, they're just gorgeous. I love bright colors. And um, 
when I do my like gypsy journals, you know, I'm not afraid of color, but, um, but these are, these are great because they're not, you know, they're vintage and I, and trust me, I love the, uh, kind of monochromatic kind of look, but, um, I love that they're vintage and they're bright. It's just so, oh God, it's beautiful. Okay. I think that's enough. And then I'm going to do this one just a little bit more on some of the edges. Okay. Maybe do that a little bit. I don't know. I have this very old um, map. Atlas. I was going to tell you guys too, when I bought all those old books, I bought them on eBay. And the thing is, is that I um, purchased them in like a lot of books and they were super cheap because they were so beat up. Oops, I didn't mean to rip that. Let me just get some bigger pages out. Oh, I've got to start using some of this stuff, guys. Let me see. Oh, well, there's some of these I don't... <laughs> some of these I I really don't want to use. And then there's some that... I gotta kind of separate those. I've gotten to the point where I'm using everything I have. And I really need to just start... And the reason I like some of them more than others is they have a really good patina to the table. I'm going to leave that for the inside. On the outside, I think what I'm going to do, what happened to my little deal here? I have a bunch of different lace and stuff like that. I think I'm going to put that in there. I got a whole big thing full of stuff. And I just want to see what I have that I might use. I might use that. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Trust me, I have tons. I have got to start using it. That's part of the reason I'm digging through here is I just have so much. Let's see that. There are some pieces I have that are more... Um, a little bit more dingy than others, so but I can always fix that. Let's see. Okay. Now I have to find pieces that are not going to be overly thick. So let's see, maybe I'll put it upside down. I want to put that down here. Just take a piece, maybe. And I will put that right over here. And put that over here. Then maybe take another piece of this. This is a different lace. Maybe that piece might work better. edge maybe right in here no I don't want it in both sides like maybe I'll cut that oh, here's a smaller piece that might work okay that doesn't need to be there so that could be a here. Yeah, I like that kind of, sort of. Yeah, let's see. And then I'll put pieces on top, too, but the ones on the bottom. Now, do I want to put
I think that works for me. So, go ahead. I am going to probably let's see. Um, going to do this. And I'm going to put more stuff on here, but this is like the first layer. So, anyway, boy, humidity sure does play a part in whether or not this stuff, like I probably will put something in the corners, you know, and then around it. So, but I'm going to need to put Mod Podge on this too and seal it and get it kind of on there good and I will put corners on this probably I don't know we'll see we shall see but I like how that looks and now I'm gonna do the back and the back I probably won't put as much stuff I'm gonna put um, a little bit of lace put that
think that's good. Um, I'm going to put something here. I don't know what yet. I like how that looks. I think it's going to be really fun. I am going to put a, um, a closure on this, but it's not going to be, it's going to be, um, probably just like a wrap around type thing. I don't know either that or it might be a hitch post, but I'm not going to put anything underneath this for a closure. Um, so anyway, what I decided, I think I'm going to do on this, I'll go ahead and put some music paper in there. And I want this part to just kind of cover all of that, but I don't want it, I don't want it um, just straight. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to tear that. Where'd my ruler go? Eh, it's a little big. I'm going to cut it a little bit more. Just a tiny bit. On the bottom. I'll just do just a little bit more. There we go. Upside down. I don't know. It does look kind of good. All right. I guess I'll do that. I guess I'm going to do that. But I love. I like leaving the part of the old book. I really don't like to change that much. But I guess you can see the sides. All right. Let me ink this up a little bit and see. I'm still not 100% sold. And I know you guys will tell me after the video. What I should have done. Let me see. All right. Get that on there. Still gonna have to get those stupid sides to stay down. I can't believe how hard that is. Okay. And I do want to kind of spread it out so it doesn't buckle. Right? Okay. So I'm going to put that on there. I almost put it upside down, although I don't doubt it would be a big deal. But there we go. Get that extra glue off of there. Get kind of smooth that out with this instead of that other thing so it doesn't rip anything again. All right, now I'm going to put the middle part in and I will need more glue right here. And let me put this ink on here. I'm still going to have to go back in on that other thing. Just get that to stick down. That's crazy. Alright, so I'm going to put that in there. I don't know why that's there. Okay, so that will cover the tie back. And... And, you know, just do it 50-50. But it'll also help reinforce your spine, too. You know, although I think with the Tyvek, you've got plenty. But it, it doesn't hurt. You know, you can definitely... I don't want too much sticking out over there. But I do want it to stick down. Okay. A little bit more right up here. to stay down. And a little bit more right up here. 
So this covers a tie back and then it gives it a kind of a more vintage look. I mean, you could use, you know, any kind of material that you want. You could use um, paper, but it's not gonna be as strong as far as re reinforcing it. You could use lace. I may put some lace on the inside here on top of this. Um, I haven't 100% decided on that. But in a nutshell, guys, that's it. I am going to put um, some lace and trim on the sides here. Um, I'm probably going to put a few things here. Um, like perhaps I have some old tatting here. I may take some pieces off of that and put it like in the corner. That actually looks pretty good. And maybe put that up there. I may put some more, you know, down here or over here. Um, but that's kind of, you know, the idea. I'll put some other lace. Let's see, tear that. This stuff's really old, so it tears super easy. You know, kind of here. I may put some pieces along the back. But that's kind of what I'm going to do. Um, just to give you an idea, uh, but I want to let this dry and seal it, and then I'll put the other pieces on, um, so that it'll look like it's, you know, it's just an old book. And the cool thing is it's very reinforced, so when you want to sew in your signatures later, um, you don't have to worry about them falling apart or anything like that. And yes, this book is, you know, bigger than what my pages are going to be, but I'm going to have some other bigger pages in there with it. So I think it will probably work out pretty good. Um, I, you know, I'm not sure. I'm probably going to put pockets or something on the inside. So I haven't 100% decided on what I'm going to do with it. But this is where we are. And I will definitely, um, definitely let you see the finished product.